All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to open up 7Z or 7-zip files on your Windows 10 PC or whatever PC you're using, really, so that you can access the files inside of it. This also will work for zip files, RAR files, and pretty much any other type of compressed archive, which is what these are called, that you might run into out on the web, 7-zip should be able to open up the vast majority of them that the average person will run into. If you're not quite sure what a zip file is, think of it like a big briefcase full of papers. It's so full, you smush it together and then clip it closed because it compresses everything to save on space. And in this case, to make it easier to put all these little sound clips together in a little sample folder. So to get this started, head on over to 7-zip.org and go ahead and download the 64-bit version here. It's also got other versions available for things like Mac and then install it, get it all set up, and then we can move on to the next step. Um, if you want to just Google it, it is the first result on Google when you look up 7-zip. Not to be confused with WinZip. WinZip requires you to pay for it. 7-zip is completely free. Once you've got that downloaded and installed, you should be able to right click on a given like zip file. In this case, I made a sample 7-zip. I'm gonna go down to 7-zip and I'm going to say, extract it to a file of the same name. Now you have two options, well three technically, that you can do to unzip these different archives. You can extract it to a folder that's the same name as the actual archive which will keep it all neat and contained in one location. Because if I extract it here, like if I just delete all these other files, if I extract this here, and I just go into 7-zip and I just say, extract here, it'll spill the contents of this folder out all over this file. So if it's on my desktop and there's a bunch of files inside of there, it'll make a giant mess. So be careful that you don't do that. Instead, I'm gonna go down to 7-zip and I'm gonna say extract to 7z files. So now it's got its own folder and now they're all neatly contained inside of there. Likewise, if I open this up and I go to 7-zip again, I can also open the archive using 7-zip, which will open up this little file browser that allows you to add, remove, or extract stuff directly from the archive itself. And let's say that the only sound that I need, let me delete these again. Let's say that the only sound out of this collection that I want is the Uncle Roger hi -yah sound. I can just click and drag that out into my folder and now I've only tactfully extracted that one object and now I can go ahead and play it, use it, or do whatever I want with that specific file. Now, if I want to, if I go ahead and delete this again, and I extract all of these files with 7-zip, I just say extract here, and I delete this old file right there. I can, oh, it's open right now, so I have to close this first. If I delete that file, now I can make a file and show you how that works. So if I wanna add these to a 7-zip folder, I can just right click, go to 7-zip, and I have a couple of options. The first one is add to archive. I can manually tell it what name I want it to be, what type of zip file I want it to be, and I can add a password if I want. Or I can make it really easy and I can just add it to share sounds number five, because that's what the folder is called, and it'll automatically put that into a folder named after the folder that it's sitting in. That's really quick and it's very convenient. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to add it to an archive just so you can see what that looks like. This is where I can say sample seven zip folder. And then I can select what kind of format I want. I'm just gonna leave it as a seven zip folder, but you can make it a zip, a WIM, or a tar file. I'm not entirely certain the difference between those. You can say how much you want it to be compressed, how much space you wanna save. Ultra will make it the smallest possible. Uh, fastest or store will make it the same size as if all of those files were just sitting open in this folder. I'm just gonna leave it at normal. You can select the different compression methods and look those up online if you wanna know more about them. Dictionary size and word size and block size are kinda like how big 
Do they want to make each chunk if these files get larger? Like if this becomes a really big 7-zip file, that'll determine the size of the individual chunks that it's made up of. But this you can pretty much just leave at the default unless you have a different reason that you look up that you want to mess with those. This uh, number of CPU threads, this is how many threads it'll use to try to compress faster. How much memory you want to use out of all the gigs to run this process. You can also split it down here into like say like every two gigs make an individual chunk that was more important back when internets were slow that way if you had an error while you were downloading like a mod for a game you could just download like chunk number four and not have to re-download the whole thing then over here you can do things like add a password so that it's encrypted so that only people let's say have paid you money on patreon or have ordered like a project from you if you're delivering a website or a video or something can access it because you've given them the password but i don't need to add a password so i'll just leave it as a 7-zip file and it'll be called sample 7-zip folder and i'll just click ok and there it is it's ready to be uploaded to an email or to be sent out on a file sharing program like google drive and i'm ready to rock so that's the basics of how to handle 7-zip to open 7-zip folders, to access them, to create them, and all of that. I hope you found this helpful. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.